Before the death of Iwanyamu, Iwanyamu made a plea to Federal Republic of Nigeria. As if I went to Villa and begged Nigerian nation. If Anuba made a statement in the same line, I want to say to you, my brother, the human well place, Senior President, convey this one message on behalf of these Hebrews who are seated, that the best way to honor this great young man is the release of Namdekalo. <laughs> so the Hebrews can go home and reorganize their place. And I know you, Senator Babio, that even if you don't want to do it, send this message. For the sake of your wife, who is our daughter, send this message and get us a result. Or else, your wife is not too far from taking back home. Your Excellency, Mr. President, we are particularly happy that you are always coming to associate yourself with things like this. Nigeria still remains very grateful. Thank you and God bless all of you. My people, my people. We are mourning Senator Fahoba. He was a colossus in the business world. Personally, I came across him in 2008 when he invited me as a governor to Apapa to visit his uh, business complex. And I was amazed at what a young man could do at that time. Over 48 pumps with so many fuel tanks. He contributed a lot. Of course, the former president has mentioned Tan Transformation Ambassadors of Nigeria. He took the country by storm. When he entered into politics, a lot of people in Anambra were shaking. They were very scared of the civil student of Ifanoba. Ifanoba was very prepared to prove that the political party did not matter to him. What mattered was the love of the people. They would love him. So whether he contested under any platform did not matter. Hence, he picked on white people. YPP, and uh, he won election twice to the Senate, and it's not an easy thing to win election as a senator. Even Senator Ngike can tell you that. <laughs> so, when he joined us, our chairman, Ganduje, is mourning today. Please accept my sympathy, because we were about to prove a point in Anambra that even the obedient movement of 2023 did not affect Ifanoba and did not affect the Newe community. We've lost a lot. We're about to prove that point when Ifanoba turned from YPP to join us in the APC family. We're very glad and we still remain glad. We hope God will bring more of Ifanoba to Ndibu. So, we will do our best to join you even on the day of interment. All the threats notwithstanding, the senators are determined to be in Newe to honor Senator Ifanyoba. And I'm saying that because even my dear wife, Ekaite Onama Gosulakwavio, one of you, I don't take the threat light, light, lightly. Somebody said, if I don't, uh, is it a uh, Rochas? Rochas, uh, my people, my people, that said, if I don't take the message to the federal government to do one or two things, that it will come for my wife. I got scared. Because <laughs> I know I'm standing here, all the strength I have is because of the prayers of my wife. I don't know. So I want to plead with uh, Rochas. I will come to your house personally to inform you after I've delivered the message to the federal government. So please don't contemplate with withdrawing your daughter from my house. I don't know what I would have done. But I thank all of you. If I did not like anything about marginalization, he loved Ndigo so much that when we were clearing the service chiefs 
Unfortunately, one of them has just passed on. May so rest in peace. If I ever wanted to talk, if I ever raised his hand, and after a while I was about to close, he jumped up and breached protocol and said, Mr. Mr. President, I don't like the way you are marginalizing Ndigbo. How can you marginalize Ndigbo? Ndigbo has not asked any question. Meanwhile, Senator Ome had asked questions, <laughs> so many others. But because he had not asked, he felt he was representing the marginalized people of Ndigbo. <laughs> and therefore, that only his voice that the Igbos will hear. And so we had to stop everything and say, okay, we don't want to marginalize Ndigbo. It's always not eh? Uh, so, so, so the civil senator sat up and speak on behalf of Ndigo. He just stood up and said he wanted to thank them for assisting him to provide security in their way and sat down. <laughs> <laughs> so at any point in time, in fact, unfortunately he won't be there to see the growth of his baby. The, the Senate passed the Southeast Development uh, Commission. And this is something we feel should have been done immediately after the war. There should have been a special commission to take care of the destruction and the effects of the civil war on Debo. A group of very mercantile people, hard-working people, who on their own, where would you think you would have taken money to do all they had done? Almost all the Igbo people that I know after the civil war, the billionaires are all self-made. Whether in the aviation industry, you look at Ojema, whether uh, uh, you look at Chief Okonkwo, who just found out that he wasn't the only one who sponsored uh, Governor Gige. Yeah. <laughs> and that uh, if I remember, was also there. So I expect him and Governor Gige to go and discuss outside. <laughs> Uh, that is united. Where did I make out for? And so many others. I can tell you that the Igbos are self met The Igbos are very proud people. The Igbos are very mercantile. The Igbos, the Igbos are the only ethnic group in Nigeria that when they enter Kano State, they build houses in Kano State for themselves. They don't rent. They turn around the place. When they enter Lagos, they, build, they own almost uh, two or three local governments and build houses and live there. There's no place they go to, they don't make impact. But other Nigerians will come to my state and rent houses and stay for 15 years and go back without building a structure. But the Igbos are not the same. They are not like that. Wherever they are. So if I ever represented the cream de la cream of the Igbo enterprise, I can say that his dead okay. has dropped us of a great entrepreneur, a great philanthropist. For over a decade, this has been the birthplace of innovation. Innocent Vehicles is a testament to resilience, employing international best practices to create more than just a car. Every vehicle here tells a story of durability, fuel economy and safety. Crafted with the African spirit, the Nigerian heart. These vehicles surrounding me embody the unique concept of regionalization, each one designed to cater to the tastes and preferences of our people. From the streets in Nigeria to the terrains of the Sahara, these vehicles are designed for our roads, for our people. This is more than a vehicle. It's a symbol of our progress, our resilience, our collective success story. Your feedback drives us to continuously innovate and improve. Innocent Vehicle, the pride of African roads.